This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Conviction upheld after a pickup manager forced himself on junior worker. A former senior manager at the Passport Immigration and the Citizenship Agency who was convicted of indecent assault after forcibly kissing a junior female employee in the elevator at work has lost his battle to have his 12-month suspended sentence overturned. The appellant, Barrington Merchant, was sentenced in December 2015 to 12 months in prison, suspended for 18 months for indecent assault, after he was found guilty in the then halfway tree resident magistrate's court. Merchant, who at the time of the incident was the operations manager for the investigation and the surveillance unit at PICO, had appealed his sentence and conviction, but the Court of Appeal upheld them last month. The former soldier was arrested and charged after a university student reported that he kissed her against her will and told her that he wanted to bed her in an offensive and lewd manner. According to the details in the recently published judgment, the complainant reported that on October 29, 2013, about 4 p.m., she entered an elevator with a merchant. While browsing on her phone, she noticed a shadow and looked up to see a merchant standing close to her. The complainant said he then held her hands above her head, pinning them against the wall of the elevator, and proceeded to kiss her. When he was exiting the lift, he told her that he can't wait to catch her. During the trial, the complainant testified that before the incident, Merchant had asked her to call a number for him, but told her that he did not get to reach the person after she dialed the number. Some time after, she said Merchant called her and introduced himself. Merchant had denied kissing the complainant or making any remarks to her. He accused her of lying and colluding with another employee, Linval Houston, one of the persons who the complainant had told about the incident and who Merchant claimed had an axe to grind as he was being investigated for forgery. Merchant indicated that before his promotion, he had confronted Houston, who was his supervisor, about a forged document bearing his stamp number, and since then, he has been marginalized by Houston. In respect to the sexual offense, Merchant contended that he met the complainant after she was introduced to him by two female workers and that she had asked him to assist her with transportation to the University of Technology, but he told her that he would not be able to take her all the way and she gave him her phone number. Merchant said that he later called her, but she told him that she had already left for school. But the judge had found no evidence that Houston harbored any malice towards the appellant who had orchestrated the report against him. The judge also found the complainant to be credible. Merchant, however, appealed on the ground that a resident magistrate had erred in finding him guilty despite very little evidence to support the charge and erred in imposing a sentence that was inappropriate and excessive. He also appealed on the ground that the judge had failed to exercise her discretion to give an appropriate warning considering evidence that one of the prosecution witnesses had a grudge against him. Further, he contended that she did not carefully consider and direct herself on the evidence that Houston could have influenced the complainant. But the Court of Appeal judges found no merit in the grounds and disagreed that the judge had erred. They posited that the judge had carefully considered the assertion made by the defense about Houston and found no factual basis for those assertions. Noting that the maximum sentence for the offense was three years, the appellate judges further disagreed that the sentence was excessive. In the case at the bar, the complainant was a junior member of staff and the appellant was a senior member of the agency. He breached the safe environment within which any employee ought reasonably to expect while at the workplace, regardless of his or her position within the hierarchy of the organization to which he or she is employed, they said. Attorneys at law Keith Bishop, Andrew Graham, and Raxon Bailey represented the appellant. No prison time for ex cop convicted of shooting former schoolgirl in the head. Former police corporal Kirk Hay, who was found guilty of shooting a then 13 year old schoolgirl in the head in a taxi in downtown Kingston, has escaped prison time. Following almost four years of impassioned plea from his attorney, Peter Champagne QC, 
The 42-year-old who was convicted of unlawful wounding was on Thursday sentenced to two years in prison, which was suspended for two years pending good behavior for the period. The suspended sentence means that if he is not convicted of any offense within the next two years, then he will not have to serve the two years imprisonment. Sentencing was handed down in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court by Parish Judge Sanchez Borrell. He was found guilty on February 10 following a trial. A probe by the Independent Commission of Investigations revealed that on June 30, 2016, the driver of a taxi which was transporting Convent of Mercy Academy and the St. George's College students was stopped by the police but drove away after briefly complying. The police then fired at the vehicle and one of the bullets hit the female student in the head. A spent shell recovered from the North Street Marklin shooting scene matched the M16 assigned to him. After being hospitalized for an extended period and with physiotherapy, the schoolgirl recovered. He, who at the time was assigned to the now disbanded Mobile Reserve Unit, was subsequently charged with unlawful wounding, while four of his colleagues were charged with misconduct in a public office and attempting to pervert the course of justice. The four were acquitted. During his trial, he had denied being a part of any police shooting. But ballistic evidence presented by Indicom prosecutors proved that it was his weapon that was used in the shooting. During sentencing yesterday, Champagne begged the judge to take into account a number of positive factors, including his sterling contribution of 18 years to the police force. He highlighted that he had been responsible for the recovery of a number of illegal firearms and was bestowed with 10 glowing commendations for his efforts. Local government minister and the opposition condemn murder of Lennox Hines. Minister of Local Government Desmond McKenzie has strongly condemned the murder of councillor caretaker for the South Bar Division in St. Catherine, Lennox Hines. Hines was gunned down along Marcus Garvey Drive in St. Andrew last evening. This is absolutely brazen and brutal. While the motive for this heinous crime is yet unknown, it is clear to me that these criminals, who shot Mr. Hines down in the evening traffic on Marcus Garvey Drive, wanted to make a public show of the evil that they committed, said Mackenzie. It is another terrible example of the violence that is afflicting our society and the combined determination of the security forces and ordinary citizens right across the country is critical to turning this situation around, he added. Heinz served as counselor caretaker for the division since 2014. According to Mackenzie, he proved to be an enthusiastic and dedicated student of the system of local government and the fixity of purpose required for effective service. He was the embodiment of sincerity in service and he was waiting for the opportunity to become their official representative. Sadly, he has been savagely torn away from his family and from the wider community. I pray for comfort and healing for his family in the difficult days to come and I hope and trust that his killers will be brought to justice. Meanwhile, People's National Party General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell has called Hines a murder tragic. He expressed the sympathies to his family and to colleagues. He called for the perpetrators of the murder to be swiftly brought to justice. DCS defends its stewardship amid the fresh claims of abuse at a juvenile facility. On the heels of a news report that a 14-year-old ward of the St. Catherine-based Rio Cobra Juvenile Correctional Center has been suffering abuse at the hands of staff members, the Department of Correctional Services has defended the stewardship of the facilities it oversees. The DCS issued a statement Thursday, hours after the publication of an article in which a Westmoreland woman accused employees of the Rio Cobra Center of beating and starving her son without provocation. The relevant authorities have been notified of the circumstance involving a ward and are investigating to determine whether there is any truth to the allegations the release stated. The ward's mother said that her son had informed her of multiple alleged instances of being beaten by a staff member since he was placed there for uncontrollable behavior in 2021. I got off one call and my son said to me, Mommy, if you don't free me, may I go kill myself because the staff members threatened me. Mickey can manage that one, the mother who has two sons at the facility told the news. Him say, Mommy, may I get abused? Me hungry. They may treat me bad. I have never ill-treated my sons. I never beat them. I just carry them to CDA to control them. But they are being abused. Me can't work with that. 
I need them to come home right now, said the worried mother. Yesterday, the DCS insisted that all wards of the juvenile correctional facilities are treated with respect and given high-quality care. Wards within the juvenile correctional centers are housed in safe and secure environments with competent staff, adequate provision of food, personal care and hygiene products. They each have access to health care facilities and medical personnel, including psychologists, who conduct weekly sessions and the psychiatrists, the release said, adding that they also receive psychosocial support from case managers and the chaplains. The accusations come more than a year after a news probe in February 2021 unearthed allegations of human rights abuses by correctional officers at the center, which was built during the 1980s. The Independent Commission of Investigations has also reported that the wards had said they were being stripped down to their underwear and locked away for nonviolent offenses, such as talking back or being absent from the dormitory at a lockdown time. On Thursday, Yannick Taylor Wellington, Director of Complaints for Indicom's Southeastern Region, confirmed that her office had been in contact with the ward's mother in relation to the allegations and that follow-up visits with the minor had been scheduled. Jamaicans for Justice Executive Director Michael Jackson also called for the government to adequately address the conditions under which juvenile wards are reportedly kept in custody. Some 200 wards are being housed at four juvenile facilities across the island. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.